Welcome to these two trig exam prep videos where we will go through selected exam questions on each of the sections covered in the trig video series. In this first video we will look at the context around trig in paper 2 and then at some exam questions covering the first three topics we looked at, sketches, reduction and equations. Note that where applicable round answers off to two decimal places. So first a reminder that trig covers 50 marks of paper 2, which is about a third of the paper. And then an encouragement to really get on top of your trig, knowledge of the theory is key. Once you're confident with the theory, then there are several areas of trig you need to master by practicing the application of your knowledge and gaining experience through all the different ways questions can be asked. Our selection of exam questions start with these three questions on sketches. Pause the video here for a moment while you give these a try. Let's have a look through the solutions together now, starting with the solution to the first one. We were given that sine of 40 degrees is P, therefore we can write that as P over 1. Our first step is to make a sketch, so 40 degrees and P. P over 1, and then completing the info on the triangle by finding the third side using Pythagoras and the third angle, the complement of 40. Then in each case, reduce the ratio of a positive acute angle and see what next is necessary. So for 1.1, sine of 140 reduces to positive sine 40, which is P. For 1.2, cos of negative 40 reduces to positive cos 40, which if we read off the sketch is root 1 minus p squared over 1, which is just root 1 minus p squared. And then for 1.3, sine of 80 is already a ratio of a positive acute angle, but 80 isn't the acute angle from the question. So the important step here is to consider the relationship between 40 and 80. 80 is double 40, and so sine of 80 can be written as sine of 2 times 40. This double angle can then expand to 2 sine 40 cos 40. And then at this point, we can find sine 40 and cos 40 ratio values, either by using the sketch or from the answers we got to 1.1 and 1.2. This here is then the final answer for 1.3. Now for the second question. First, we need to identify this expression as a sine compound angle of the sum of two angles. This then gives us that sine of 53 degrees equals k. We use this information to then make our sketch, 53 degrees and k over 1. The third side is root 1 minus k squared, and the third angle is 37 degrees. Cos of 143 reduces to negative cos 37, and reading off the sketch, we see that cos of 37 is k over 1, and so negative cos 37 is negative k. And then lastly, for 2.3, this is the expression for cos of the difference of two angles, which of course can be written with the term in cos first if this helps you to recognize it. And so this is therefore cos of 75 minus 22, which is cos of 53, and this we can read off the sketch as root 1 minus k squared over 1, which is then just root 1 minus k squared. Our question 3 is a slightly different type of sketch question to what we've done previously. Here you are given information about an unknown angle, in this case beta, enough to know which quad it belongs in. In this case, tan is negative and beta needs to lie between 0 and 180 degrees. In other words, beta must be a second quad angle. In order to make the sketch, we place beta in the second quad and complete this triangle here towards the x-axis. This will then be our reference angle and tan is opposite over adjacent. In this case, y is positive and x is negative because we are in the second quad. So place 5 here and minus 4 here. The third side is then root 41. If we now take a look at our expression that we need to evaluate, hopefully its context is a little clearer. We can read cos beta off as minus 4 over root 41, then sine minus 150 is sine in the third quad, so this reduces to negative sine 30, 
cos of 180 is minus 1. Remember to make a quick basic cos graph sketch to check this. And just one more trig application here with a 30-60 degree triangle. And then as you continue through, it is crucial to follow through accurately and confidently with your algebra. And the value of this expression is therefore minus 6. Next up, we have three questions on reduction. Pause the video here to give these a go. You may have noticed that the first two examples were reduction questions with angles as numerical values and the third example with angles containing the unknown A. Remember, for these reduction questions, take each factor one at a time and for each remember the double thinking process necessary, first to find the acute or reference angle and then to figure out the sign by considering which quad the angle is in. Let's start by looking through the solution to question 1. Our first step here is to reduce each factor to ratios of acute angles. This gives us special angles in each of these four cases and then negative sine 80 and cos 10 for these two. Let's consider the overall sine next, which works out to be negative. We can then follow through by using our special triangles for these ratio values and then we need to decide what the next step is with these two ratios. 80 and 10 are complementary angles and so either we can change cos 10 to sine 80 or sine 80 to cos 10 using co-ratios. They then cancel each other out and then this is quite algebra heavy but hopefully by focusing on one factor at a time you manage to get through it all accurately to the final answer of negative 1. Question 2 is a little different. First of all, each factor is already a ratio of an acute angle and then we have a difference of squares in the numerator or if you flip the terms around carefully, you have the negative of cos double angle. The denominator is looking very close to sine double angle expansion except instead of a 2, there is a 4. You can split the 4 up into 2 times 2 and then you have 2 times sine double angle. This is then minus cos 70 over 2 sine 20. Apply co-ratios and you can cancel. You could also have changed cos 70 to sine 20. And the answer for question 2 is minus a half. For question 3 we have the unknown A in the angles and so we go with do as we see. Reduce using quad angles and co-ratios where applicable. Also note the axis angle here, cos of 360 degrees, which is 1. When simplifying further, first we see that the signs work out to be positive overall. And then because of applying the tan identity, sometimes it is easier to divide by a fraction rather than having fractions within fractions. Simplifying further then gives us an answer of cos A. Lastly, for this video, we have four questions on equations. Pause the video to try these two first and then go on to see the next two. Here are questions 3 and 4. Let's have a look now at their solutions. Question 1 was a type 1 equation, a ratio equaling a value. It's important here to remember to divide through by this 2 before finding the reference angle. Once you've done that, find the reference angle and decide which quads you're solving in. Then set up your equation. Remember for tan it is plus n180 because both quad solutions can be included in this one equation. In this question they ask for the general solution, so this is your final answer. Question 2 was a type 2 equation, a ratio of an angle equaling the same ratio of an angle. So here, this is what we are solving for, and theta is our reference angle. Cos is positive in the first and fourth quads, and so here are the equations and then the general solutions in each case. The second part of the question asks for solutions within the interval minus 90 to 90. To find these, we use the general solutions above. First, making n 0, then 1, then 2, etc., and then negative 1, negative 2, etc., making sure to get all your possible answers. There are only two valid solutions for theta here though, minus 30 and minus 10 degrees. 
Question 3 is a type 3 example, a ratio equaling a co-ratio. I prefer to always change the right-hand side ratio, but which one you change is up to you. Once you've changed the ratios to be the same, then you continue as if for a type 2 equation. This is our angle we are solving for, and this is our reference angle. Sine is positive in the first and second quads, and so these are our two equations, which then lead to the general solutions. 3.2 then asks us to find all possible solutions for theta in the interval minus 90 to 180, using the same method as before, with different values for n for each of the general solutions. This time there are five valid solutions for theta. Question 4 is a type 4 equation, a mix of ratios. Here we take everything to the left first and factorize in order to solve. Once we have the product of two factors equaling 0, we know that either the one or the other has to be 0. Sine theta is 0 at 0 degrees and then every 180 degrees in both directions. And for sine theta equaling 2 thirds, this is a type 1 equation. And so we find the reference angle and identify which quad sine is positive, and then find the equations in each case. Because they asked for the general solution, these are our final answers. Well done for working through all these questions. There are plenty more great examples in our study guide and our past papers toolkit if you are looking for more revision. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, part 2 of exam prep for trig, we will work through questions on identities, graphs and solution of triangles, as well as some interesting questions to get you thinking. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.